let's finish this review up. Here we have uh, numbers 22 through 25. 22 is a really interesting problem because it is, uh, in fact, three out of these um, last four are interesting because they are the College Board's way of um, having us do some things um, or, you know, making sure that we can run a complete two proportion Z test and, and figure that conclusiveness out just from um, from the data in a multiple choice question. Okay, so you're going to have to run a whole test just for this little multiple choice question. So here we have that. They give us all that data. And then I know that I'm meeting at p-value because they ask me if I have convincing statistical evidence. So that's what's indicating to me I need a p-value. And then it gives me these different significance levels so then I can use those to decide uh, what it's if any it's significant at so that's whenever I come on over here and I'm putting in my data I know my first sample is that or my my first population is that proportion with the um, cinnamon and the other one is the placebo so that's what I put in for my one and two um, so now I'm wondering if I've got that greater for the cinnamon, and that gives me a z-score of 0.975 and a p-value of 0.16. So that's the major thing we're searching for to make a conclusion here. So because that p-value is greater than any alpha normal alpha that happens, and the highest alpha that I've really seen in, in significance tests to say something is significant is a 0.10. Okay, so you don't get much p-values or alphas, sorry, you don't get much rejection regions larger than 10%. Okay, so we ended up having to not statistical significant evidence at any reasonable significance level. All right, 23 is the College Board's way <clears throat> of making sure that you can um, understand and know how to do a computing of a two-tailed hypothesis test by hand. Because what's happening here <clears throat> is, you know, if we had the data to be able to put into our calculator and push this little button here or highlight this for a two-tailed test, then the calculator would make this two-tailed for us and then we would have had a 0.329 or whatever that comes out to be. So the calculator does double the tails to get the total p-value when done, again, with the calculator. But if it's by hand, then that does not happen. We have to account for what's going on. So if we have a normal model and we have a z-score of that 1.85, then I would see my p-value as this area here. So I'm going to norm CDF to get that area there. And when I do that, then up to 99, then I know that I, that p-value for this p particular section here is 0.0. Three, two. Now what's interesting is <clears throat> if your alternative had P1 greater than P2 and we just did one tail, that's a small p-value. You would fail to reject. And if you failed, if you did not reject, you have, this is a significant evidence, okay, that there's an effect happening. But this problem was not one-tailed, upper-tailed. This problem was two-tailed. So being two-tailed is what's going to indicate to us, okay, so being two-tailed, not equal to, tells me that I do not have just this one-tail's worth of p-value. I have got this over here happening. I've got two-tails worth of p-value. And so I need to take that 0 0.032 for the upper tail and multiply it by 2 to get the total p-value for two tails, which is 0 0.064. And that then 
is not significant. Did I say we were failing to reject this? We're This we're rejecting. <laughs> if our p-value is this, it's lower than alpha, so we are rejecting. But with this one, we are failing to reject. So I, I can't recall if I said that correctly a few minutes ago or a few seconds ago. Um, so hopefully it did. So interesting that you would have those different conclusions. But at any rate, the p-value for those two tails is 0 0.064. So therefore, we do not have sufficient statistical evidence to conclude whatever it is that we're trying to say that that the proportion of overweight dogs in Florida is different from two-tailed the proportion of all overweight dogs in Colorado. And again, that's because that p-value was greater than 0.05. All right, <clears throat> next, this is a great problem. This one really made me stop and think because we're so much into, and I've only really taught you to do our two proportion Z tests with the calculator. So when we do that, so let's talk about what's happening. Okay, this problem I think actually really makes sense if we think of a picture. So many things, thinking of a picture makes such a big difference. So this problem is about the marriage rate in Spain and how different it is from the marriage rate in France. So this, this whole normal model is about the difference between those two countries' marriage rate. Well, we are told in the beginning of this prompt that they estimate <clears throat> the true proportion of that age group that is married is 0.36 for Spain. And that true proportion of that age group they're referencing is 0.26% for France. So what they are saying is that they are estimating that the population has a difference of 10% for that age category difference between Spain and France. All right, so that right there is the reason that we cannot use our calculator. Because when we use our calculator, what that is doing is saying, hey, the difference between Spain and France is a difference. They're set equal to each other for the HO. And if they are set equal to each other, then that's a difference of zero, not 0.10. Okay, so there's that. So we have this difference of 0.10. So then the question asks, what is the probability that the difference we find, Spain minus France, is greater than 0.15. So let's find that here in our picture. So here we've got uh, 0.15, a difference of 0.15. So here, what that's saying is, I get a sample, a marriage proportion of marriage sample to that age category from Spain and a sample result for the same thing from France. And we were wondering, what's the probability that is greater than 0.15? So that's going to be this area here. So I need to find this area here, and that'll tell me the probability of finding that. So hopefully you can see that we just need to get a z-score and then norm CDF to get that area. So let's do it. Here we go. So Z equals this P hat, the difference in the sample proportions, the difference in the samples, minus that difference in the population. So where the difference, where those samples should be centered over the standard deviation for those differences. Whoa, hold on a second. That's going to have to be computed because we're not just doing this in the calculator. So look, I'm going to have to put in all of Span Spain's data here. It's actually sample results. Spain's, oh, that's not true. I do have population amounts. So I am going to put in Spain's population amounts and France's population amounts and add those 
square root it. So I do get then, and I'll show you the math here. Here it is. Here is getting that standard deviation for the differences. Here is Spain's information, um, population value, and that um, sample size of 60. Here is France's population proportion and successes and failures in that. That comes out to 0 0.88, 0 0.088. So there we have our z-score is 0.15. Minus 0.10 divided by 0 0.088, which is 0.57. So I kind of knew that when I was drawing this picture here. This may be a little more than 0.57 standard deviations away. But now I just norm CDF from 0.57 up to 99 to find that p value. And that comes out to be 0.2843. All right, now hopefully this last one came out pretty simple for you. They wanted to know the standard error for the difference between those two proportions. And so that is this. And again, remember standard error is made with sample proportions. Okay, so then you were just filling in those blanks for the not scientists and the scientists. Okay. I hope that that review helps you um, feel successful in your understanding of inference with proportions, one proportions, two proportions, confidence intervals, hypothesis tests, and those errors, power, and things that control the size of errors in power. All right, so good luck to you on your test, and I hope that you do well.